Hello and welcome to the second instalment of the Supercharged Lead Gen series from Moneypenny. My name is Dan Marshall and I work at Moneypenny as Digital Marketing Manager. In this series, I'm going to be talking to some of the greatest minds in lead gen marketing to pick their brains on the challenges and opportunities that we all face as marketers currently. And of course, along the way, we'll be getting their top tips for how you can supercharge your lead gen activity too. Today, I'm joined by Chris ashley Mans, who's the CMO of Webio. Hi, Chris. How are you doing today? Hi, Dan. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much again for, for joining us and being part of our series. We're, we're really looking forward to today's call. Um, I wondered, Chris, if you could kick us off with a, a quick introduction to yourself uh, and Webio and what you guys do. Sure. So, um, yeah, I'm CMO at Webio, which is the, the business website personalization platform. Um, and we enable our customers to deliver real time personalized website experiences to their audiences um, wherever they are. Um, the main aim to increase engagement, but ultimately increase conversion through to action and then into to business ROI. Um, I've got a background of, of demand generation, been in, in B2B marketing demand generation for the last 12 years. Um, so I've been there, tried it and, and test lots of things along the way. Excellent. So high hopes for lots of tips from you today then, Chris. And uh, all I'm the best. B2B <laughs> marketing. <laughs> So we've got a couple of questions we're going to go through today, um, some specific to personalization and some more generic around marketing. Um, I'll kick off with a nice, a nice broad question for you. Um, what do you think is currently the biggest challenge that, that marketers face when trying to drive leads in this, in this new market we're in now? Yeah, I, I think this is a, you know, like I said, it's a really broad, broad question, but I think right now and certainly earlier in 2020, you know, it's been around... The, the need to pivot and pivot at breakneck speed. You know, if we weren't agile marketers, we certainly are, are, are now. I think that, you know, obviously traditional channel performance has really turned on its head. You know, events have been cancelled. Direct mail isn't an option. Digital lead generation has accelerated. You know, it's been a pretty tough year for us. But I think as we move into the, the, the new year, some of the, the two biggest issues that are facing marketers, I think, are around forecasting and and maximizing as much return from marketing spend as we can when you think about it you know all that historical data and insight that we crave as marketers in terms of campaign performance you know it's, it's rapidly changed so projecting and forecasting is much much more difficult than ever before and you know and in terms of you know how we find those all important success cadences to drive the right volume and the right quality of leads into our businesses particularly where budgets have been cut or there's that real need to squeeze every ounce of opportunity from our marketing activity i think they're the the two biggest challenges i think that are facing us now yeah I, I certainly feel the pain on the forecasting uh the forecasting challenge recently you know trying to work out you know how my paid search campaigns are going to perform in january which is uh, normally a seasonal peak but yeah absolutely really um so yeah they're tough challenges what, what do you think as marketers we need to do or, or what skill set do you think we need to work on to, to overcome those challenges yeah i think you know we we have to take into account we do have nine months worth of data to interrogate and leverage obviously since it's covid took over our worlds um and we can leverage some of that insight into our, our forecasting and and ultimately that's all we have access to so we have to use that and leverage yeah. that as, as much as much as we can but i think you know the the age-old adage you know test learn adapt test learn adapt and i think you know that's certainly what me and my team have been doing this year to to build what is essentially brand new demand generation model for the for the here and now and I think a lot of that comes down to, to being brave, testing some of those new channels or new tactics that you maybe haven't got round to doing before, where budget allows us to, and finding those small tweaks in activity that can make a big difference to performance. Um, I think for us, despite obviously us being in the, in the business website personalization space, our marketing activity has got really, really personal. So we've honed in to those ideal fit audiences and prospects you know, like many people, you know, we've, we've generated less volume of, of, of opportunities this year. But um, as long as the quality of those opportunities are really suited to our businesses and you've got the ability to serve that customer or that prospect in the right way, you know, conversion through that funnel 
is likely to be higher. And in most cases, everyone is happy, including our, including our sales team. So certainly I think testing and learning and being bold and brave, absolutely, are, are, are ways in which we can overcome some of those challenges. Yeah, I love, I love that point about being bold and brave, actually. I think there's, there's got to be a lot of bravery from, from marketers at the moment, isn't it? You know, absolutely. To fight that corner with directors and boards, et cetera, to say, you know, yeah. there's some money to invest right now. It's, it's, it's a yeah. tough conversation, isn't it? So yeah, really interesting points there. Um, and often our leaders, our leaders are in the, they're in the same situation. They're aware of the situation. So, um, you know, particularly at board level, um, they're aware of that need to be brave and try and test and learn. Um, so I think more than ever, you know, leaders within our businesses have got have got marketing's back and giving us a bit more flexibility and freedom to to do that. Yeah, always nice to have that, isn't it? <laughs> the best thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's great, Chris. I wanted to pick your pick your brains on some of the personalizations. Mm-hmm. That's, that's kind of key to to what you guys do at Webio, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, we we've obviously uh, Money Penny been using Webio for the last few months, and. I've always been very conscious that it's a great tool, personalization, but I think in the B2B and lead gen spaces, it's probably still very early in the adoption versus you know, e-commerce, B2C retailers, et cetera. Absolutely, absolutely. What do you think is the kind of the easy way in for you know, the lead gen marketer? Like how, do they, how do they broach personalization and, and mm. that as a tool? Yeah, sure. I think when we look at the, kind of the, the, the non-digital um, world, do you think you know, email, paid social, you know, even personalized programmatic display, direct mail, they've been used for, you know, for, for many years and are a great way to demonstrate levels of personalization. Um, we did a study with B2B marketing um, a couple of months ago, actually, on the state of personalization. And so the good news is that, you know, that 75% of us are using personalization in some form. And it's also pretty much on people's radar with 95% of B2B marketers are saying that they're either using it or planning to use personalization in the future. But there's, you know, there's a big challenge around the measurement of personalization, um, you know, with only like 63% saying that it's effective or very effective. And you know, there's a couple of reasons why that is and those barriers to success that, that might be stopping personalization from progressing. Some of those are around technology out there. So you know, not being able to facilitate that quality level of personalization that we're, that we're looking for, a lack of understanding of how to use those tools that are available to us. I think there's certainly, you know, challenges around the difficulty in bringing together all those personalized options to form one cohesive personalization approach. Um, but the biggie is the, you know, that inability to effectively measure the success of your personalized marketing on on roi yeah i think i mean and that's that's not i suppose that's not a, a b2b problem exclusive to personalization is it that's one of the challenges we always face with lead gen you know actual attribution and uh, right through to client data you know long lead cycles it's, it's, it's tough for b2b in every sense isn't it so yeah absolutely absolutely what do you think it is about? So obviously, Webio is um, mainly like personalization on a website level. Absolutely. Do you think it is about that that helps to drive improvements in lead gen activity? Yeah, I think from a, from the the website perspective, it's about recognizing your audience, right? So you know their needs and wants, and demonstrating a a deep understanding of their business issues and how you can help them. I think. It, it helps buyers and customers feel valued that you have recognized them. Um, but, you know, but it generally, personalization does genuinely contribute to our business objectives as marketers. Um, Gartner's um, completed a study that showed that personalization delivers, you know, between five to 15% increase in revenue and up to 30% increase in marketing efficiency. You know, so that's pretty impressive results and from um, from personalization efforts. But um, within Webio specifically, there are you know, the two key reasons. That the first one is that you're creating that connection with your audience by demonstrating your relevance to them um, and their industry and their and their business. Um, but flipping back to a, a point you touched on earlier, that you know. B to B as B to B buyers, you know, we do expect that same experience that we get as consumers, and um, we want businesses to understand us and make recommendations 
on what we'd be most interested in. You know, personalization is really ingrained in the consumer world and um, it really should be in business too because we've come to expect it from things like Amazon and even Netflix in their making recommendations for what we should all be watching next based on our habits. Yeah, I think that Netflix must be down as the, the king of personalization, surely. One of the practices of that. Absolutely. Um, if you had to give some advice then to people starting off with the, you know, website personalization or mm. the first time someone opens Webio as a platform, what would you say is the most effective form of, of personalization that they could do, you know, just to start off and start to get on that journey to trying to find those results? Absolutely. I think one of the, the, the real easiest ways that you're able to, to use Webio on your website is to set up very simple um, IP based company name, industry and or geographical personalizations. So and you're able to do that within a, within a matter of minutes, you know, you're a user yourself and, you know, been able to set those types of experiences up to serve to a very broad audience or actually to bring up the niche and um, you've got all that flexibility to do that and, and it does deliver you know instantly a much better customer experience and increase to in conversion to lead and with the reporting that we've got within the system itself you can very easily see the different metrics of where um, a, a, a personalization has been served against where it hasn't so you know the increases in dwell time and um, increases in conversion rates um, some of those key key metrics and um, the, the key part is that it, it, personalizations you know are our experience for every visit to that site so you know you're telling them that you're relevant to your industry you're serving the right content that they're looking for it makes their lives much easier and positions you perfectly as being relevant to them i think um some stats that uh, that we've um, been looking at from this year alone that our clients have seen about, on average, a 275% increase in on-site conversion. And by that, we mean a, an inquiry or a demo request. So um, when they've been using website personalization, so its effectiveness um, you know, is incredible. And where we talk about you know, squeezing every single opportunity from a marketing investment, imagine the difference that that kind of increase is gonna make um, in your website cost per inquiry or cost per demo. Um, you know, we're having to squeeze and maximize every single opportunity to generate the best. Um, but for me, uh, the most exciting type of personalization is around targeting the individual. So with Webio, you've got the ability to integrate with your marketing automation platforms and your own first party data. So you can serve bespoke website experiences to you as a person, your job role or your persona. And it takes personalization to, to the next level. And it's incredibly exciting. Excellent. That sounds good. There's definitely some some big numbers there for uh, improvements in leads and stuff as well, isn't it? So anything that that can do that for our lead numbers, we're all we're all very happy with that kind of thing, aren't we? So um, some great answers there, Chris. Really appreciate that. Um, I've got one final question for you, which is yeah. a nice broad one as well, just to make yep. it easy. Um, what what would be your top tip for any any B two B marketer to to supercharge their lead gen activity in next year? Um, aside from using Webio, we've been seeing you know incredible success with video this year, and by video I mean really personalised videos. Um, they can be really time intensive, but deliver you know really strong engagement, much higher than other channels. But I think everything comes back to I've used this word so much, but it all comes back to relevance. So at every touch point, we've got to demonstrate more than ever that you're the right choice for your business audiences. If you, if you can't get that across quickly, you know, opportunities are lost and, and those potential business buyers are going to move on um, to some of your competitors. Um, and I think the top tip comes down to you know, that bravery and boldness. Um, you know, if budgets and constraints allow, put yourself out there a little bit more, test and learn and, and try some of those things because even if it's like small or large, um, incremental changes in performance can make a, a big difference to us in the future. Excellent, I like that. Um, I take that on board and start creating some uh, bold and brave videos that are personalised to people. Do exactly <laughs> that. I can see that working really. Absolutely. Well. Um, that's that's a great tip. So thanks for that, Chris. Um, that that concludes all my my questions um, for today. So just say you finish on a, a big thank you to you, Chris, for joining us and, and sharing your insights. Thanks for inviting me. 
um, you know, hopefully everyone watching this can put some of that into action for themselves, um, try those things out, try Webio, try being bold and brave and, and see some great results next year. So thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you.